good morning and warm welcome to all the participants uh, uh, to the morning session to today it's our pleasure and honor to have with us dr ak mohanty sir is principal scientist hod in charge extension information and statistics uh, icr central for fisheries technology coach in kerala and the topic chosen for deliberation today by our uh, esteemed guest is advances in extension techniques for linking research to development in fisheries so you are audible and visible uh, please switch to power, uh, this uh, just go to just just have to go to the powerpoint and uh, switch to powerpoint basically you just have to click double click on the screen i think it's maximized double click on the screen double click yeah go to powerpoint yeah please start the slide show please start sir unmute sir you have to first unmute yourself uh, you are muted uh, go to chrome 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 yes unmute yourself and you can turn on your camera yeah please go to powerpoint now and start the slide show okay you can start the slide show sir so that the slide gets maximized yeah perfect okay full slide has come yeah yeah okay good morning uh, thank you mr majid thank you nadcl so good morning friends so myself dr ak manthi i think uh, nadcl has already been introduced with me so today at the end of this i think we are at the fag end of this training program and this is the one of the important topic i want to discuss today that is in advances in extension techniques for linking research to development first of all i want to highlight these things because whenever we are doing any kind of research because we used to know we used to conduct many research we used to develop many technologies at the lab scale then we have to off scale the dissemination of the technology for the development purpose otherwise research has no meaning without development so that's why extension plays an important role when we convert the research to a development process so that's why extension plays an important role today we'll discuss about the advances in extension techniques so first of all i want to know everybody must be having the idea about the extension just i want to highlight some of the important points of this extension because everybody is doing the same kind of things we are passing on the information to different kinds of stakeholders in different form but what for you are doing this thing that is for bring to bring a transformation in their knowledge first thing second thing in their skill and third thing in their attitude that's why i used to tell cas means knowledge attitude and skill if knowledge will increase then that will have an effect on the attitude of the person he may develop positive or may develop a negative attitude your techno towards your technology towards your research these things then if it is positive then he will come forward to develop some skill then then only he can demand your technology to improve the quality of the life that is called that is the process of research to development that is the transformation so that's why ag agriculture particular this sector which plays an important role in the livelihood security of our society this particular discipline plays an important role because this plays an important role in the policy formulation because when researches are being developed here if it will not be put into your policy then it cannot be implemented in the field then there is no use of research no use of your technology so that's why extension makes a link between the research and development so then i'll come to the objectives of extension then why for we are doing this extension because we used to assist our stakeholders here i am i have written farmers but in case of fisheries it is maybe fishermen processors then exporters entrepreneurs to assist all the kind of stakeholders to discover prioritize analyze their problems and factors that is everybody knows but prioritizing is one of the important factor discovering or identifying the problems identifying needs that is everybody is doing but then you have to prioritize many needs will be there but which is the priori priority one that you have to see then you have to analyze 
which kind of needs or problems can be resolved at your end by you or by that particular agency because every agency or every person cannot um, solve all the problems of a particular stakeholder so we have to think upon this what is our limitation of, on which aspect we can prioritize then which are the problems we will have to analyze which we can give some solution that is the first most important thing otherwise if we we'll give a commitment something in the field because this is such a very sensitive uh, uh, science where you are dealing with the human being directly dealing with their behavior dealing with their emotion dealing with many kind of their attitude so if you are committing something because i am a fishery scientist or i am a some i know what is my limitation what is my institute can do so if you are going to the field the, um, the stakeholder they don't have any idea about your boundaries uh, they may think that you are the person from the government sector or public sector or private sector you can change anything or you can solve all their problems these things but that should be clear what you can do and you define your role there you define your limitation is there then only you will have to analyze their problems accordingly you can give some solution in the next stage i will tell you how it can be resolved also then uh, second thing develop leadership among the farmers help them organizing groups so always you would go through a groups to solve any kind of problems of the community so from that group you have to identify certain voluntary leaders those who can take the initiative to motivate that group to bring dynamics in that group because your job is to give some technology to intervene with some technology for the development process to bring some change in their farming practice to bring some change in their conventional practice these things so that individually if you go it may not be sometimes successful that also i'll deal with why it not be successful so that's a many advanced techniques also now it has come then because on the basis of the objective extension also the techniques have been developed Uh, one after another and the process of development then second third thing is already you know disseminate research information for this economic and practical uh, utility basis then assist farmers in mobilizing and utilizing the resources this is the another important thing whenever you are going to intervene with certain project or programs you have to see how farmers can mobilize and utilize their own resources own local resources means own means who is he owns means it is within his boundary within his periphery that resources should be available so that it will be easy for him to tap that resources so that is very much essential on the on tap their resources on the basis of their needs then transmit the feedback information solving the problems trans feedback means it is not only the management problems only because feedback information regarding your technology regarding your any monitoring problem regarding any management problem any kind of field based problems related to technology related to economic aspect related to financial aspect related to social aspect every feedback information you should get then it can be modified so this is the clear cut objectives of extension so with this if one some person can do some Um, if you want to intervene with some extension project or programs in the field he may be successful then here just uh, this diagram will show you how research are converted to development extension in the process which bridges between the research and development this is and this is the thing here why development is required because improvement in production income generation employment generation entrepreneurship development nutritional development and livelihood development because whatever things whatever research is we are doing that is for this purpose only that is called development and there are many uh, conventional extension methods are there information passing methods communication methods trainings like these things then i will tell you the protocol of technology transfer system that that is the most important another most after objective that is another most important one you have to know what are the proto, what is the protocol of technology transfer system because this because you know technology generation this is done at the research organization level and then comes after generation of the technology we used to publish paper substantiating that our technology is a very successful technology 
so but uh, you should remember that only by publishing a paper you cannot claim that your technology will work in the field will technology perfectly fine perfectly it will perfectly function in the field for that there are several other processes the technology generation is the lab scale basis control condition then comes technology validation when you develop a technology we have to validate the technology in the field because you know agriculture fisheries horticulture whatever this this particular agricultural allied sector these are very much prone to number of natural factors like your climate temp sorry temperature and fall altitude then soil quality water quality many many conditions are there many environmental condition also there so on that basis your control condition when you are developing a technology in your lab so whether it will function in the field in the particular condition because in jammu somebody sitting in jammu he is going for a technology and somebody sitting in uh, ladakh whether the same technology will uh, um, be, be operational there will be successful there it may not be also so it is not like a medical science these things because human beings are same species same thing but uh, your uh, this agriculture allied sector that depends upon various physiological factors so these are very this varies from place to place depending upon the altitude uh, depending upon the um, rainfall depending on the climate th these things so that's the technology validation of the field is very much required and then technology adaptation means previously people having their own it is not a new something we are going to new means that is different suppose we are we are developing a particular practice of the improved harm practice of fisheries so people must be doing their thing conventionally they are having some conventional practice but when are going into improved practice they will have to adapt with this that is acclimatization that acclimatization is required when they will see the thing in the field what is the function what is the um, what is the success of this what is the performance of this technology then only they will go for the acclimatization of this program so that may be a so this is comes technology integration there he may go for a combination of their both com conventional and some improved version because i'll tell you in some cases you will see um, some cases people want this is their um, local resources this was a local these are the local resources are available you are going with a new technology which may not be adaptable to that local resources but by seeing the performance if they want to take up the technology but they will also follow the previous conventional practice because they don't want to take the risk so that is integration of the technology they will take the conventional as well as your modern technology so that is a technology integration so that process validation adaptation integration that is called on farm trial so where it is technology assessment and refinement process is going on that is the in india we have a very vibrant and very robust technology transfer system that is you must be knowing krishi vigyan kendra so this krishi vigyan kendra's mandate is technology assessment and refinement when the technology has been developed at the research organization or seus or any kind of institute then it should pass on to the krishi vigyan kendras which are working on the different agro climatic condition on the basis of the particular district it is a district based organization so they used to do the technology validation technology adaptation and integration then comes if the, your technology is successful it will be a blending of both conventional or maybe blending of both conventional and your modern technology then it will come for the technology demonstration because when it will be successful after refinement if there is not successful it will come for the refinement that is called feedback come for the refinement uh, with the help of the scientist again then it will again go to the field again on farm trial then whole process when it will be finally it will be accepted on the basis of on farm trial then it will come for the demonstration demonstration technology demonstration will be there there then on the basis of demonstration when it will be giving good result people will be very much satisfied with the performance of the technology then they will go further then you will have to go for the handholding of the stakeholders 
for that technology. For that, you have to give skill-based capacity building program. Then only your technology dissemination is possible. This technology, this, you are, this is called FLD. This frontline demonstration, this thing also again being done by the KVK. Then when this technology is ready, ready technology for the dissemination stage, then that is being delivered to the extension organization, public extension, private extension organization at the state level for the this large scale popularization of the technology that is called technology adoption. So this is the protocol of technology transfer system from first to from point one to point eight. So we have to follow this protocol for technology transfer system. So this is the technology trans. This is the technology diffusion model. There here will be more clear. This is the research system technology generation here KVK validation, adaptation, integration, and technology demonstration. Then it is called line department NGOs. They will call for te technical. But they will also go for technology backstopping, technology dissemination, and then technology adoption. And this feedback and feed forward feed, feed forward process is always it will. It will always be in uh, personal stage because sometimes when it will not work in the field, it will go for the feedback through feedback system. It will go to the research system. Again, it will be refined and come to the KVK. If it will perform well, then it will go to the next step that is line department and NGOs. Then I'll give you another example. This is also one principle you should know. Why? Because sometimes people become very impatient when uh, our stakeholder doesn't accept our technology. Just to think of yourself, as a human being, you should think of yourself, how, why you are accepting one new things, new idea, or any kind of new, you know, any kind of innovations in your technologies or in your day-to-day -day affairs. Suppose you are going to purchase a new vehicle which is launched in the market or a new mobile phone set which is launched in the market. This is the stage you are passing through. Because on the basis of some certain data, data means what are the road performance, what is the what are the different features are there in the automobile sector. I am telling talking about some new vehicle. What are the different features? What are the uh, automatic or manual or HP, CC or um, that uh, bullets that uh, that uh, means so many things are that tire size. So many features are there. Or the remote uh, that sensor uh, that camera so many features you used to see on the basis of data you create a information within yourself just close that one you create you get get some information about your innovation about your about your that new product then on the basis of so much of information then you compare with the different products different uh, uh, type of processes you compare with this what is the then along with that also you can compare the price also that is also another important factor economics of the technology that also will deal later on that also economics after all, all these things economics of the technology and performance of the technology features is separate and one factor that is advantages then your uh, um, this uh, easy to handle that is also another aspect then economics of the technology then this is the most important thing on the basis of that, you compiled all the information in your brain. Then after that, you will come to a conclusion that is due to a, a conclusion means then you get, from this, you will get knowledge. From this different, I, all the information, you are getting such knowledge. Then you will get some knowledge means then you will able to process that knowledge to get understanding about the whole thing on the basis of a certain comparison of different aspects. I told you economic aspect, then uh, performance also, road performance or economics or complexity, uh, ready to, means uh, very much easy to handle these things. There are certain things you will take into consideration while understanding the whole thing. When we completely convinced with these things, then it will come to your wisdom. There only we will take a decision whether I will go for purchasing, whether I will go for adapting this technology or not. So these are the things normally a human being passes to these stages to accept one a new thing. 
new technology adopt a new technology this wisdom stage so you have to pass through these stages what are the processes also that you should know data and person knowledge understanding wisdom so you have to touch the wisdom of that stakeholders if you want to really give your technology to the stakeholders for the development purpose so this is the another things every many people they used to confuse with aims goal objectives output outcome okay here i want to just when you take any anything any project these things you are having some output okay output means by using certain source of inputs when you are making them into action suppose you are um, putting them into action means implementation senses you are getting immediate result that is called output but when it gives a change in the whole system that is called outcome so then only we will get the impact so that's why sometimes people used to say what is the so tomorrow you have given our this season you have given a technology some people used to say what is the impact of the technology no impact of the technology all of a sudden it will not come impact when it will come when it will give the outcome only because suppose i'll tell you in a simpler form suppose one variety of a particular uh, fish species you want to introduce that variety for culture system for that you are having different recommended package of parties then that's why they, you followed that package of parties then it gave a result of good production good size of uh, these things species then after that it is not it is the output you have increased the production but outcome when it will come when it will be acceptable by the stakeholders when it will be acceptable by the consumers when it is, will have the market value then only it can bring a change in the um, income of the stakeholders income of your pieces uh, that can change the income of the economy status of that um, people then only it will bring some employment opportunity then it will bring some livelihood development tell change in the uh, so with the stakeholders that is called outcome so that will not no, come immediately so that's why i used to tell if you want to do some impact study of certain technology that should have some short term impact medium term impact last um, means long term impact but short term impact also doesn't have any result only that short term impact means you will able to know the what are the problems these things in that technology why it has not uh, com completely um, successful in the field then only accordingly so mid term correction can be done so only the impact study can be made only when the technology has gone to the field at least minimum for it will take some one or two seasons to bring a change in the system that will call that is called outcome then only it, it can bring the we can we can study the impact of the uh, technology so then i'll tell you another uh, some because why i'm dealing with this some processes these are the near process when a man when a uh, human being will involve for ch for changing his life state because there must be certain achievement motivation then will come forward to take up your technology so that is the thing so that's why one maslow's need hierarchy theory is there on the basis of because human being first what he wants he wants his food air water clothing immediate so that stage your technology may not work because immediately he may work just to hand to mouth he wants to um, stay comfortably with uh, with food water air clothing then come safety and shelter this is protection stability these things then love and belonging that is the affection acceptance the inclusion that is from the society from his family you get then after getting all these needs fulfilled this physiological safety and love and belongings he thinks of of his own recognition that is called means he feels that i uh, i am um, means he feels something on kind of self esteem type of feelings Uh, comes to him so that's why he wants his own recognition he wants is yes, i can why can i why i should not can i should not do it because he 
feels that self-esteem within himself, that he should be respected by others. At that time, he wants some changes within himself. So that kind of changes will bring a motivation within himself. That is achievement motivation. So that is called self-actualization. This stage, when a person comes to this stage, so when you want to intervene with some technology or program in the field, you should select this type of people, those who can go for accepting your technology, then only other people can slowly follow. So that's why self-esteem, those who are having self-esteem, those who want to achieve something, this kind of people should be. Because the rural development program is different, technology intervention program or technology population program is different. So that's why rural development program may be, um, may be targeted towards this um, group of persons, those who are under this. But when we are going to intervene with a new technology to a, to a society, to a community, we'll have to go through these two stages. Then comes what is the logic model in extension. So another half an hour just I'll go through the, these are the different concepts I told you, what, what are the different concepts of extension. We should know about the human psychology, we should know about the human uh, mentality. Then only our extension program will be successful. Then it is with us. We should know because we are going as an extension agent, we are going as an extension scientist to the field. After developing the technology, anybody is going to the field to disseminate that technology to the field. Means for them, you should always think that why? Because how I can win? How I can win? Okay, that is first question. Means how I can able to convince the people to take a my technology or our technology. If you cannot demonstrate the results successfully because people want simply by storytelling, they will not believe you. They want the result. It should give, you should demonstrate the result successfully. Then only you can win. If you cannot demonstrate the result successfully, then it is you cannot convince people that your technology will work. First thing. Then, after demonstration, if you cannot measure the results, as measure the results means how you can measure as compared to your previous one, conventional one. If you are taking one new technology, you have to compare with the certain things so that you can tell that my technology is better than the previous one. Okay, that means you are measuring the relative uh, performance of your technology as compared to the conventional one. Then only you will be able to know that whether I am success or failure. Then another thing, if you cannot see the success, you cannot learn from it. That is the person. So because through the uh, process of these things, if you want, if you can prove yourself a successful person or your technology to be a successful one, then only you'll be able to learn, okay, how I'll have to intervene with this technology. If you cannot recognize the failure, you cannot rectify this. Another thing that is most important thing, the scientist should always understand that. Because sometimes it becomes very, um, means what is the very sensitive things. Sometimes people doesn't want to um, means acknowledge or want to um, this what do you do? I want to confess that my technology could not perform in the field. Yes, because I know that I have published a very good paper in a high impact factor journal. So that doesn't mean that your technology will work in the field. Your paper has been published on the basis of your result in the lab. But uh, Technology demonstration, technology population is different than that. So if it is not performing in the field, we have to, oh, this is the point where technology failed. You have to identify the point where your technology is not working and what is the reason. Then only you can rectify this. Is. So that are the points to be keep, kept in mind for the successful performance of the extension agents. This is called extension program planning. When are you going for intervention with a new program 
on new technological intervention that is called extension program planning you should always think of this 5w1h that is a most systematical way of intervening these things if you just keep in mind these things what to be done what are your problems what are the problems in the pill what to be done what are the problems in the pill and for whom to be done who are your clients problems may be many in the field suppose you are going to a village or any landing center different type of stakeholders are there problems will be many you are going with a certain technology so after identifying the technologies you should concentrate on who are your clients whether fishermen whether the um, this uh, uh, people those who are landing center those who are sorting and handling this those who are handling the fish or the transporters who are your clients because your technology must be some specific technology you are taking so then accordingly you have to select the clients then why to be done why you want to intervene with the technology because problems is this you have a tech, suppose you identify technology then what is their needs for resolving that problem there may be problems may be many but you have to again prioritize the problems on the basis of their needs they want that feed should be kept in storage condition that uh, cold storage facility should be there that is their problem should be many fish uh, getting uh, damaged or due to lack of uh, proper storage facility or due to lack of proper transportation due to lack of proper regulations fillers uh, they are not also getting good price many problem also there at the landing center and uh, there a hygienic problem also there suppose you are going with a technology of hygienic technology you want to have a hygienic technology so many problem on the basis of that you have to prioritize okay out of these things uh, i am prioritizing the hygienic is the most important thing which should be taken care of because now people are very much conscious of the quality and hygienic uh, things so that's why you have to select who are the persons are involved in the hygienic things so these are the those who are handling the fish so you have to take these things then why to be done what is their need they will tell okay we are not aware of this we don't have these facilities how to handle this we don't have any gloves or this kind of a uh, clause of these things so that kind of needs also you have to see as per their problems then you have to plan how to be done planning then you have to find find out the location of that uh, intervention then when to be done at what time the technology should be intervened and when the stakeholders should be free at what time at which place then who are the agencies to be involved you may be the technology agency but you cannot implement that you are giving a technology so you have to involve some more agencies in that process those who can able to uh, convinced about your technology and they can able to implement the technology in the field that is the then only your program planning will be successful that is called 5w1h then these are the different problems challenges in the extension in the field both in indian fisheries food and income needs uncertain climatic conditions unpredictable market policies and uh, sensitive policies poor access to technological know how credit everything you know all these things just i have highlighted i just i want to highlight these things weak rural institution that is also another important at a rural level weak rural institutions are there those who are not able to support the stakeholders inadequate participation lack of participation of the people globalization and liberalization the now again new challenges has come agriculture that extension has at the crossroads because many development has come now we must be knowing it has come into the picture due to it intervention everybody having their mobile on their hand you are telling something simply they will go to the google they will check whether you are telling the right thing or not so this is the one example i have told you so now extension is at the crossroad people having a different vision people having becoming more market oriented people having uh, having um, people are getting profit oriented simply they don't want to have a hand to mouth life hand to mouth type of life they want to market their product they want to get more income they want some kind of export oriented products that's why extension needs to be changed on the basis of the 
people's needs people's expectation so new opportunities and on first in threats have come in the field of extension so that's why um, that in the field so that uh, that influence our the economy our production employment generation as well as finally it also affects our livelihood security so we have to tap all these things all these problems and opportunities threats all these things you have to tap all these things come in uh, we have to take all these things into consideration and we have to find out a new kind of extension techniques maybe many mechanisms previous mechanism traditional conventional mechanisms are there now new kind of mechanism cost recovery mechanism decentralization process pluralistic convergence approach impact assessment micro entrepreneurship as well as disruptive extension some of the new mechanisms you have to think upon in that way and besides that also you are having poor planning strong uh, we need some strong innovative extension system then uh, a lack of institutional intervention again extension needs a total reformation so this is the highlight of the common extension methods everybody know and everybody used to follow this kind of individual methods group methods mass methods these are the different methods people used to follow knowingly unknowingly in the process of extension but here i'll tell you how these things have been changed this is the paradigm shift in extension process because previously extension up to 20th century extension was okay it is the transfer we are thinking that extension is only transfer of technology but now we should not tell this is a but do you are using transfer of technology but we should think it in a different way it is a capacity building you are not simply transferring a technology you are developing a capacity within your stakeholders that is on the basis of their skill knowledge so that they will demand your technology that is called capacity building you are developing a capacity then previously it was a top down approach whatever policy will be formulated it will be implemented at the grassroots level top down approach but it was a very rigid approach so it was not at all successful though it was followed for since long time but now we are thinking of the bottom up approach which will be a very effective approach because what is the field situation what are the things required of the field what are what people wants what is their intention what is their problem what is their need what are the resources available as like um, as per these things only our policy should be formulated that is called bottom up approach then production led so this bottom up approach also we used to follow our when we are going for any research because somebody is going for a research they are giving a proposal at what basis we are giving a proposal it is not that fault our policy makers used to tell nowadays we used to make a stakeholders meetings what is their problem what is their need on the basis of their need problem and resources then we used to go to the field on the basis of all the factors we used to think oh this is the problem of the field this is my area so i want to make a project proposal for my research so that some technology can be developed it will be useful for them that is called bottom up approach previously it was a production led but now it has become market led previously only we were thinking of individual approach without farmers participation now we are thinking of group approach because farmers because group approach mean it will be more safe because something come uh, something has been failed or an individual when an individual fails the totally the system will collapse there is your whole extension system where extension purpose will collapse there but when a group is approach is there means one individual may fail but other individual may support it that is a group approach so group dynamics also you have to follow they are all participatory actions will be there and here previously we are thinking farmers as a progressive farmers and fishers now we are not talking in that language we are talking agri preneurs fish preneurs like this because now everything has become market oriented not only in previous we are talking about the supply driven um, agriculture or fishery but now it has become a demand driven people used to demand on the basis of the market so that's why you are talking about the people agripreneur fish trader the the concept has been changed so we have to change our 
concept change our techniques in the on the basis of this concept then research previously linkage was the research extension of farmers now this has been extended to another two players research extension farmers then comes entrepreneurs out of some farmers some become some will be the entrepreneurs then it will come to the market and previously what was happening uh, only scientists were taking telling the recommended package of practice now these things have been changed recommended package of practice it is a it is a very customized practice for a particular system but now it has been modified to a good agriculture practice based management practice so it is a combination of certain field level practice as well as some of the research practice so that from that we will able to know what are the good agriculture practice and best management practice so this is the change in the extension system so on the basis of that different change the new extension techniques advanced extension techniques has come so this is some of the new extension techniques just now i will discuss with them this is on the basis of farmers field school farmer to farmer extension market led extension digital extension and public private partnership these are the 21st century extension now it has been brought to a transformation stage that is called commodity based village development this is a combination of different types of techniques or approaches rural agriculture advisory services then model village system of extension asset based community development these are all innovative extension techniques so and ultimately as you talk like that disruptive system so now also we are talking that we are talking in that form only we should go for a disruptive extension because you don't know if you are going with a preconceived mind to the field you may think your stakeholders are sustained while going when you go to the field you will see a different scenario there so that way you have to change your techniques you have to change your approach everything so that is called disruptive extension you have to combine the different types of extension techniques to transfer your programs of these things so these are the old techniques were there tnb system but it was a single line of administration so it was a failure system on the basis of some research studies also conducted they also found that this system was not that much effective then farmers field school it was also found that the farmers are the expert there here also we are thinking the field is the learning place where farmers could take the decision but still then we found out that there is certain gap was there between because uh, within the research and the field level technologies so it was not that much cost effective also because farmers always they cannot take many things whatever researchers are being developed so do farmers are the decision makers but sometimes the technology are not being developed in consultation with the farmers in participatory mode so that's why also farmers field school was not also that much um, uh, get the um, uh, good result then uh, this is the uh, things then comes market led extension here also different groups are uh, rural institution groups are for farmer interest group nowadays farmers uh, producer organization capacity development then linkage were established with the help of the icts then market intelligence also provided to them it was a very cost effective approach still then it is also going on so through different um, social media e extension activities has becoming very very popular so we have to also um, adopt this approach also through popularize for popularizing our technologies so like this it was but sometimes some research research results has come for that farmers should be more educated about the ict approaches and everybody should have the access to the ict facilities so that is one of the obstacle in that system then comes a mobile phone advisory system then another come rural advisory services this rural advisory services that is the another important uh, extension techniques nowadays because it was uh, th- it was also um, seen that people are nowadays people are ha- people are in information hunger stage people want information 24 into 7 times because without information you cannot survive this is the stage has come like this everybody having that information on their fingertips so 
you have to be that much careful for providing the accurate information at the right time to the right stakeholders so that is the information and service as demanded by the farmers and other actors in the rural setting and that uh, related to your technology related to different organization related to different schemes related to different management skills or different types of package of practice because different stakeholders are the rural setting different type of stakeholders of large farmers they want different types of information medium sized farmers they want or medium sized farms uh, fishermen they want different types of support or different types of information and the small type of aquaculture farms those having they want different types of information according to their information need also you have to prepare the information you have to pass on the information in the right direction right approach right time right people okay so this has becoming very successful nowadays so in, it include increased coverage at low cost and a perception of increased sustainability is there then comes commodity based village development this is another important technique advanced technique why we are calling commodity based village development this is related to your market because and related to your resource based sustainable because you are going to intervene with the technology but uh, what are the inputs will be required for for implementing the technology that resources you have to ensure that resources are available within that area so that resource based sustainable socio economic development will be possible only then innovative development that should be emphasized on a particular commodity that is on the cluster basis suppose you want to um, give some product development value added product development technology to a particular community when you are giving a value added product development these things that should have a commercial importance that should have a, um, some Uh, market demand but and this product should be very much cost effective in the market and it should be well tested by the consumer acceptance should be there so you have to develop a cluster on that basis that product should have a brand of that cluster but that commodity should develop a brand on the basis of that cluster that uh, that product will be named as a brand of that cluster because people will know okay ha uh, that product from that area is better than that other product so that will have to develop that branding of that product on the base branding of that commodity on the basis of that particular cluster so that will ultimately that will lead to a development of the community and development of the that uh, that a village so that is called commodity based village development then model village system of extension approach that is also another thing so in spite of your technological popularization or intervention program at different location simply for uh, purpose of getting the target you should concentrate on one or two or three villages concentrate your technologies along in convergence with other agencies and you develop that area that cluster as a model village with your fishery technology and agriculture technology then horticulture technology then other rural development also everything so the any convergence pluralistic convergence approach if you are converging all the stakeholders associated in the sector um, those who can finance the people those who can help in the marketing of that product everybody can come together at one place then one cluster can be developed as a model village so that is called model village system of extension so that will bring it that will give a more impactful result to disseminate to popularize your technology for the development purpose then only because if it is a more successful with the convergence of the all the stake instead of all the stake all the agencies are doing their own uh, doing their work at different places so that's why it become a duplication of their efforts duplication of the resources instead if it can be converged so you think of one like this converge all the agencies those who are associated in the sectoral development to converge at one point or one cluster at least to make it a model village system model village system then it will be more viable approach there you can adopt also commodity village commodity based village development approach then come asset based community development approach 
asset based community development approach that is a new concept that is being management based technique because here the focal point is the asset asset means the resource availability with that community not the need of the community okay that is also essential problem prioritization and the need then after that need when you are going to intervene with the technology who should ensure that whether the physical physical asset physiological asset uh, and other uh, financial asset and social asset means labor other things these are all available within that community or not that is called asset based community development because it links micro asset of the community to the macro environment so here it becomes more viable more sustainable and everybody gets the opportunity to come forward and give their decision associate with the community benefits then here all local economic opportunity also comes to all the people so that's why it becomes very much important very much viable nowadays it is a new management techniques of extension programs this is also important uh, this results are showing to be very um, um, promising result as per the research conducted by and start a case study then lastly i come to disruptive extension approach disruptive extension approach is a total a combination it is not a, any particular uh, approach or technique it is a combination of all the thing whatever is required at the field level when you are going to the field you should not go with a preconceived mind that i want to do these things when you are going to the field your approach your technique your technology may change also there so that's a because here good governance takes the important place because you want to have a Uh, means a good management of your technological intervention programs then only it will be sustainable so you should have a clear cut analysis of the field level issues for technology adoption all type of social conflicts community resources everything should be taken into consideration you should find a one emoju with that community to take your tech to accept your technology so that will be more positiveness will be there then you should have a cost recovery mechanism that subsidy may not be encouraged there subsidy you can give in these things you can give free of cost but uh, imports other things but you should develop a cost recovery mechanism so that they can continue suppose you are giving a solar dryer for the community so that they can go for the improved fish drying techniques but it can be used in a cost recovery method and custom hiring basis by the community so that tomorrow anything happens they can able to um repair that uh, solar dryer they should not uh, when if the solar dryer is got out of order they should not again come to you sir you give me another solar dryer or they should not stop that activity that is a cost recovery mechanism so you should find out a custom hiring mechanism there is optimum resource management maximum economic benefit also will be there and here a uh, pluralistic convergence also will be there so all the aspects will be covered here but you have to think which aspects will fitting to that situation because that will bring a all societal development so this is called disruptive extension so with this i am going to conclude my lecture that is when you think that you want to do certain things in a different way that is called every successful person don't do different things only they do or do, do they only he or she does the things differently he becomes a successful so that is something when you are doing some changes your practice changes your techniques that brings you success so with this i conclude my lecture thank you very much thank you sir thanks a lot for finishing exactly on time now the second session is going to start soon we are waiting for the resource person to join thank you everyone thank you for being with us because i would have allowed to extend it to a question answer session i think sir has shared his email you can direct the questions to uh, his email but we unfortunately we have to move to another section the link will be shared on your email and on uh, the whatsapp group thank okay. you very much for joining and let's join back the second session which is going to start in few minutes thank you okay thank you thank you very much